Okay, all right, so here we are again. So um, today we are moving away from where we were, from deep space. We're going to something more fantastical. So <laughs> no, no ash holes, no creatures <laughs> facing us around asteroids or derelict spaceships, no synth cats. Oh. No mittens today, I'm sorry, Tracy. <laughs> and we've actually got some new members, so obviously people will be familiar with Brad and Tracy. Um, M is is currently gallivanting around Madrid, I think, is where she is now. Oh. Jet setting lifestyle that she has. Um, so she won't be joining us. Um, but we have two new members, two new victims. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Murph, who uh, is in the wilds of... Is it, New Brunswick. New Brunswick. Not to be confused with old Brunswick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be having a German accent, I think, if you were new Br- old that's, Brunswick. That's right. <laughs> yes. Uh, and also we have Debbie. Who? Hey. Where are you again? Sorry, Debbie. Oh, I'm in Toronto. Toronto. So with, with Tracy. And I didn't actually ask where Brad was. I think he was about to be eaten by a bear looking at the background. I'm actually between Toronto and New Brunswick. I'm in uh, upstate Maine right now. <laughs> oh, Maine. So. And I don't know where I was where last time you? we did this. Oh, last time we did this, I was on the road in Alabama, wasn't I? Yeah, you were trying to yeah. drive off the road yeah. while playing a game. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Policeman, we didn't know. I don't know. We, 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 he was driving very safely, wasn't breaking any rules by playing a role playing game over Zoom while he was driving a car down a motorway. <laughs> Ride or die took on a whole. <laughs> <was, that> <laughs> ah. I like, I, I've always wanted to go to Maine because I was a big MASH fan. So Hawkeye was from Maine, obviously. That's so. right. It's like probably. the New Brunswick of Can- of America. Is it? <laughs> Maine is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice and woody. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so like I said, we're not we're not we're not in deep space this time. We, uh, we although we will return. Wait, we Neil. Yes. We don't know where you are. No, you didn't oh. say where you are. You count no, too. That's no. Yes. I'm in yes. Melbourne. Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Melbourne is that how they say it in America <laughs> Mel- Melbourne. <laughs> Melbourne I'm in Melbourne and it's not good day it's good day <laughs> uh, anyway. there's, there's more Canadians here than anything else so we'll just say I'm sorry yeah well I noticed when um, Merv said a boot instead of about <laughs> did I yes I picked it up uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, all right, so we are going to do something uh, fantastical. We are going to do, as you can see on the screen, we have old school essentials, um, which is uh, a re, re, not reimagining, a revision um, of the old 19 sort of 70s, 80s. Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and just to show my uh, credentials, um, I have. Ooh, the famous I have red, the red one. The I red have the red one. one. Yeah. Nice. And that's, well, this is the. <laughs> how can I do this with that? There we are. Yeah, okay. This is. Well, there's two There's two red books. There's there's an earlier version, this is version, and then there's this one. Um, this, I think this is the one that most people know, but if you're a real yeah. diehard wrong yard or whatever, there's an earlier red book. Um, and then there's, there's the, the basic, which is... So this basically takes you from a beginning character up to, to around about mid-level, around about 14, 15 uh, level, levels. Uh, and then there were other expansions that took you to higher levels, but generally no one ever really played that far. I don't think I ever played a character up into any of those sort of high levels. So anyway, so um, these were 
good, you know, obviously very successful rules and all that, but um, the, this new version, um, there's a whole range of games that are all part of this old school renaissance, I think they call it. Um, Dungeon Crawl Classics is one, OSR, which is old school renaissance, old school essentials. There's, there's quite a few different sort of iterations of this, essentially the same thing um, with some slight differences, but essentially they're all using the basic B slash X, as they call it, um, rule system. So the differences between this and... See, I, I've only had a bit of a skim through the 5th edition rules, and I, my son actually plays it, but I've, I haven't actually played Dungeon Dragons 5th edition. In fact, I haven't played any other edition beyond what I just showed you, really, um, because I haven't played Dungeon Dragons for many, 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 many years. Um, but this is, again, towards the rules light side of the spectrum. So um, I know in, in Dungeon Dragons 5th edition, there's lots of roles and ability checks, and so perception checks and intimidation checks and all this sort of stuff. There's none of that. So Tracy, no, no, none of that. You're gonna, you're going to have to wing it. So that is probably within my wheelhouse to wing it. Yeah. So if you need to, if you want to check the room for something, you have to say, "I'm going to check the room for something," and then you say, and then I say, "Well, what are you doing?" And then you say, "Oh, okay, I'll look under this table or I'll move this book bookcase and see what's behind it." And there's no just like the roller dice and say, oh, look, you found this. No, it's none of that. So um, it's very, um, yeah, rules light. Um, there is only, your characters also are fairly simple. Um, there's uh, there's some basic abilities they have, but there's, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of detail. So you, there's plenty of room for you to, make the character what you want it to be in some respects. But, um, I mean, I was actually talking to someone the other day about the classic thief. What, what, you know, what, what's a thief that, uh, or rogue or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then you look at someone like the film Conan, Conan the Barbarian, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and all that. In his film, he's obviously Conan the Barbarian. He's obviously a very good fighter, but he's essentially in the game, he's actually a thief. He's trying to steal a jewel or something like that. So mm. um, he's not, he's, yeah, he doesn't have fifi abilities generally like being able to pick locks or anything like that. But he's, you know, he's being a thief, really, just trying to steal stuff, um, even though he's a barbarian. <laughs> anyway, I digress. But anyway, so it's a, it's a, a much more simpler system, which will make it easier for me <laughs> to actually run it. Uh, and uh, but today, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to just this is session zero. We're going to create our characters. Um, so, uh, you've got a process where you will choose the race that you want to be, uh, and then you uh, roll for your abilities, and then you'll choose what class you want to be, and we can go into that. So, um Anyone got any questions before we move on? I'm curious. Oh, you... no, go ahead, Brad. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Tracy, you go. No, absolutely not. You go. Don't make me go. Oh, back for there. the love of God, somebody go. <laughs> <laughs> go on, Tracy. I executive decision. Oh, for God's sake! I, I was just going to ask if you do uh, multi-classing in this. I can't remember. Yes, we do. Okay. But it's it's a little again it's a little bit simpler. Okay, Brad. And are we a six sided die? Or are we a twenty sided die? All the regular dice that you would use. Okay. So the d twenties, d twelves, d tens. Character is is rolling d sixes. So uh, that's yeah. Has everyone got dice, or if have a dice roller no. on their screen? Uh, no. If you have Google, you can usually find a dice roller with Google. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm doing. And then just roll it on on your computer. Debbie's got like a whole <laughs> bag of dice. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie is the dice queen. Yeah, I've got. Yeah, I've got. Oh, so should I pick like dice roller D and D? There you go. I mean, all, for, for today, all you're going to need to roll is D sixes. So even if you've got some board games lying around, all you're going to need is right there. 
Yeah, that's what it says right there. Um, dice roller. Roll a die. Do, 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 do. So you can ro use a dice roller on your screen, but or if you want to be a purist like me, you actually physically roll dice. Um, okay. So what, what what actually what we'll do when we actually play the game, um, I will probably employ uh, a software package like something like Roll Twenty, or I think there's one called Albert Rodeo. I think there's another one. There's a mm. few different incarnation can, in, in can versions um, of of uh, where you can essentially do what we're doing now in a Zoom thing, but you can also put up maps and stuff. Uh, and they do have things like dice rollers, and you can have icons of different characters so you can move them around on the map. So that we'll probably use something like that once I work out how to use it um, uh, for doing the game. And there are dice rollers already built into into those software packages, and they all run through a, a web browser, so you don't need to download any software onto your PC. It's all pretty easy to use. Um, uh, so that should be fine. Uh, but yeah, for just for today, you'll just need some D6s for character um creation cool um okay so uh so like i said to create characters um i did send you the pds but i, I don't need to really put, it, put on my ipad here or something look at it so we are going to firstly we're gonna well actually i'll take a step back what character would you like to play what do you have in mind? Like Tracy, you had an idea that you wanted to play something, didn't you? You had a um... yeah. I wanted to play a gnome somehow, like a, a magic user, mage, wizard, something. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what we'll we'll have a oh sorry, go ahead, Mo. Oh sorry, go ahead. I'll because uh, I've got a character kind of picked up anyway. So yeah. So I mean, well, you might not. Well, we, we, there's a, obviously there's a whole range of different characters and classes you can mm -hmm. be, um, and also races and so on. Um, but yeah, if you have an idea that I want to be like a warrior type character, or you want to be like a magical character, or you want to be a sneaky character, you know, mm -hmm. just have some ideas in your mind what you want to be. Um, there, you'll all play one character. Um, you may be able to, in the course of your adventure, hire some. Uh, cannon fodder <laughs> grunts whatever you want to call them additional Drunks. additional retainers to so for example if you all decide i want to okay i'm gonna we're not really going to be a, a a warrior type group you all want to do magic and you want to do that but you need some you need some beef to sort of help you in the adventure you can hire these guys uh, uh or these characters yeah. to go with you and they'll basically be non-player characters um uh but you have to um you hire and then they have they help you so so don't don't worry if if you only if you just if you just play the character you want to play because obviously then you'll be more invested in it okay so um so like okay so first thing we have to do is we decide on a race because um some races have um some uh minimum requirements for some of their abilities um if i can find that right. There it is. Okay. Uh, so, obviously, when you come talking about characters, the most common one, obviously, is human. Um, but you, all the classic fantasy tropes, um, as far as races go. So you can be, um, you can be a human. You can be a dwarf. You can be an elf. You can be a half elf. You could be a gnome, as, as Tracy mentioned. You can be a halfling or hobbit. Um, you can even be some other characters which are a little bit unusual, like a half orc, for example, or even things like you know, goblins and so on like that. But generally, if you want to stick to the sort of standard fantasy, it's your human, elf, half elf, dwarf, halfling, gnome. Um, I've covered all of them. Strangely enough, there's no half human. <laughs> if you're half elf, you are half human, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know if it's ever say like half human. Wait, why can't you be like half elf, half gnome, or like half elf? I mean, I already. Half I'm, elf, half I already am like half I'm, I'm trying to work out how they uh, anatomically how they would sort of manage that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am half a man. Business. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, okay, so we'll make some notes here. So, Murph, um, you have an idea what race you would like to play? You want to play human? Uh, dwarf, I do, dwarf? yeah. Yeah, a, a tiefling. Tiefling, okay. Yeah. All right, so tiefling <laughs> is a uh, fifth edition thing. I actually do have some stats for a tiefling. Um, they are awesome. a sort of demonic in, in sort of like somewhere back in their family history. Someone had a liaison with a demon, whether or not that was consensual or not. <laughs> and yeah. Um, yeah, so I actually People do have there. details on a tiefling. So I'll make a note that you want to be a tiefling. Yep. So you just uh, threw in a curveball right off the bat for me. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I, I was just reading up on it and it just, it just kind of spoke to me because of their, um, uh, just uh, their, their connection to either some type of uh, evil deity like a, um, uh, a devil or some type of evil spirit or something like that. But they're, they're not completely, you know, uh, a, waste of, a waste of space on a team. Yeah, well, I will send you when we when we finish this. I'll send you some detail on the tieflings. Um, Sweet, thank so Murph, you you read you read about the tiefling and you were like, "That's for me." <laughs> I did. I I really did. I went, "Yep, that's me selling my soul." <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like Debbie will approve of that. You guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in uh, one of uh, another campaign I play, I was a tiefling warlock. So basically, I sold my soul twice. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> it's, okay. it's go big or stay home, right? <laughs> uh, I do actually have tieflings on my iPad here. Um, Sweet. Are we? Do I have tieflings? Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, um, okay, so anyway, so we'll get back to that. So you, you want to be a tiefling. Okay. Mm -hmm. And like, um, I don't know, I was, I was thinking like a cleric slash thief. Cleric suspect. Okay, we'll get into to multi classing okay, because yeah. um, there are yeah. some um, pluses and minuses that. So before you decide if you want to be a multi class, we'll talk about that. So, in okay, so you want to be a tiefling. Uh, Brad? I want to go outside my comfort zone. I want to be a human. Oh, radical. I, I hate to, we got to have one, but uh, <laughs> I'm not excited about it, but I want to try it on. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Uh, Tracy wants to be a someone of short stature. Wants to be a gnome. And Debbie. Can a human be a magic user? You want to be a human, and you want to be like a magic user. But, yeah, I, was I mean that's looking that's to the PDF and the il illusionist sounds interesting. So I was wondering right. if human can be that. Oh, okay. All right. So you got some ideas on 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 what classes you might want to be. So. Um, so yeah, so we choose a race, we roll our abilities, uh, we'll do the, 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 the dice rolling, and then we can assign your abilities. Um, I mean, there are, I think it's six abilities, strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, charisma, which is, I think, they're the classic abilities. I think even the latest edition of Dungeon Dragons has that as well. Um, so, uh, and then, so some characters, have minimum requirements um so for example i'm thinking tieflings you have to have a minimum intelligence of nine. Oh um, crap <laughs> dims the brakes <laughs> not, not you murph the character <laughs> oh. <laughs> but you do gain some benefits you get better dexterity but you also have less wisdom because you're part demon sorry <laughs> that's all right <laughs> it's a trade-off um, and you might have to get oh, used to having horns out your head. Um, no, no big deal. Who's and, but on, the plus side, you're, on the plus side, you're part demon. How amazing that, is that? Right? It's nothing but orgies and heavy metal. Well, you are <laughs> constantly horny, I guess, then. It has to be said, right? It, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's no yeah. longer I, think, about, I think that joke will get used quite a bit. I think in, it's no longer it. about M's ash hole. It's all about <laughs> Merce horns. Yeah, he's got the horn. Oh, yeah. oh horn one. <laughs> okay, so we've got an idea of what races you want to do. So now we're going to do our ability rolls. So if we were playing as completely as the rules are written, you take 3d6 and you roll them and that's your total which is fine just give me a second gen 
Go ahead. Yeah. yeah so, uh, but you can get some really bad roles. So I'm not that cruel. I don't. Um, there are people who say, "Oh, you must play 3D6 down the line and just let the dice roll, and that's what you're stuck with." I'm a little bit more forgiving. I'm. A, I'm. A, I'm. I'm. So I, I allow you to roll 4D6 and discard the lowest score. Uh, which is not, yeah. You know, that, oh. That's that's. I'm, I'm the I'm the game master, so I, I can make the rules. So that's what I'm deciding to do, um, and it's how I always played it anyway. Because it just means that you don't get really really low ability scores because um, playing characters with really low ability scores can be can make it a little bit less fun. I mean, playing characters with low abilities is, is actually can be quite fun because. Oh, you've got a really weak character. How am I going to survive? You got to play. You got to be play a bit more cunningly and all that. But if you're really too low, then you are kind of like mm, can't do anything. So we're going to roll forty six, and so you're rolling six rolls, and then we will assign. We will also again um, a little bit more flexibility based on your rolls. You can assign where you want to put them, and that can depend on the type of character you want to be because certain character classes have requirements for their um, uh, abilities as well. So, for example, if you want to be a magic user, uh, then you're going to need to put your best score in your intelligence um, because that helps you with your spell casting and so on and, and other things. Um, if you want to be a fighter, then it's probably a good idea to have a really good score in strength because you like to hit things or constitution because you don't like to be, it gives you a better chance if you get hit. Uh, constitution is your health and gives you, you know, things like your hit points and so on. So who wants to be first? Who wants to be first cab off the rank? Oh, wait. Yeah, I'll go. All right. Okay, so, so um, up for it. So, how many dice okay. do I need? I need, I need three or four. You're going to roll 46. Have you got your dice roller going? You, have you got it on your phone or on your PC or whatever? Okay, so I need four. Yep, just give me a second there. Four. Okay. So you're going to... You're going to do this six times, and then we'll, so that will give you your raw numbers, and then we can discern determine where you want to put them. Um, okay. So, so you're going to uh, so strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, and charisma. Um, okay. So six rolls. So the first roll, you're going to roll forty six and discard your lowest number. Okay. So my lowest number is one, and I have a six, four, and five. Five, so 15. Next roll. My lowest uh, number uh, is a two, so I have four, six, and five. No, oh, okay. And next roll. That's it. Uh, lowest number was a one, and I have a two, six, and four. Two, six, and four is twelve. Okay, yep. Good ability roll so far. Next one. Mm. Lowest number was a two, and I have a three, four, five. Two. Again, yep. Okay, you got two more to go. Lowest number was a one, and I have a six, three, five. You very good rolls. And last yeah. one. Uh, lowest number is a one, and I have a two, three, four. Okay. Seven, nine. eight, nine. Okay. That's actually, okay. yeah, you should be very, very happy with those scores. That, that, that's actually really good. I'll take your uh, word for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll do that. Was, so now let's go on with Brad's disappeared again. He's probably got eaten by a bear. So we'll do. Okay. Tracy, most dollars dice. <laughs> okay. So again, we're gonna, I mean, we we uh, we're not assigning the numbers to any abilities yet. We're just rolling them. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Although looking at yours, um, if you could have actually just run them straight down the line, and you'd probably be perfectly happy with that. <laughs> but we'll let you. We'll give you a, a little bit of flexibility. All right. Uh, but Tracy, nice. all right. Let's go. Forty-six for you. Okay, so my first roll is 11. 11, yeah. Mm 
My next roll is 13. Oh, oh no. <laughs> My next roll is a nine. Okay. Three more. Big money, big money. No whammies. Oh my god. <laughs> Six, nine again. I remember that. I know. I love that show. What was that? Big bet. It was. Press your Break luck. The, it was a game press show. Your luck, yeah. yeah, but they've re, they've redone it actually. Oh, did they? Yeah. Well, the whammy made you lose all your money, and it was a square where this thing would go around and hit it, and it'd be like rolling. But everybody would say, "Big money, big money, no whammies." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. What do we got here? Uh, eight, ten. <laughs> ten? Come on! Come on! All right, one more. Give me a, what, three sixes? <laughs> Ten. Oh, my God. Guys, okay, so Tracy's just average <laughs> across, <laughs> across the board. Yeah. But, okay, it's we can still, of my life. still work with that. We can still work with that. <laughs> it's, nothing, nothing, it's nothing terribly bad. All right, no. Debbie. You're up. <coughs> oh, there's the sound. There's the sound. Great yeah. sound. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. Uh, uh, 17. Oh. oh. Nice. Got a six, six, and a five. Okay. Uh, 12. Oh. Uh, six, five, eleven, fifteen. Fifteen. Good rolls. How many? How many have I rolled? You've, you've done. You've got two more to go. All right. You guys are going to be carrying my uh, eight. Is that an eight? Eight. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Getting the two ones. New dice. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole bag of dice. <laughs> My crap, three dice, please. Um, ten. Ten. <clears throat> you know that the whole thing about rotating your dice. Do you know about that? Hmm. Yeah. Wait. What? It's, it's actually. It's. It, there's no statistical probability reason for it, but I've just noticed that if you rotate your dice, because you, I mean. I've played a few, like, I don't play, I haven't played a lot of role playing, but I've done a bit of war gaming and stuff, gaming like that. And you rotate your dice, you know, that way you don't drain all the luck out of one dice at any one time. <laughs> uh, I thought you meant like turning them, and I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, so like if you're rolling a d20, you roll a d20, the next roll, you pick up a different d20 and roll that. And That's why you need a whole bag your of dice, dice and, so you can keep re rotating them. Yeah, and, and because, um, some dice are actually better rollers than others, I've noticed, just through the mechanics of how they're made. And, um, yeah, sometimes if you keep rolling the same dice, yeah. I think it's probably more psychological than anything, but mm. I've actually played a few games better. and it does tend to work. So, anyway, keep that in mind. Um, all right, so we've got your abilities, Debbie and Brad. Yeah, I'm good to go. So I can't see the... Um the video anymore that's kind of why i dropped and reloaded and i i'm assuming y'all can see me but i can't see any of y'all um oh okay yeah now i can still see you so we're doing four dice four d6 and we're taking the top three is that right that's correct yep all right so we just doing this uh i'll do all four at once the lowest was a two and that would be a total of 15 okay what does that get me uh, well, it's a good roll. Um, anything above twelve is good. <laughs> so okay. Um, uh, but yeah, we're just we're going to just do the, the 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 six rolls, and then we're going to assign them to your abilities. Okay, so I'll do it again. Yep. So and this it. one is a twelve minus one, so eleven. Yep. Uh, Sixteen minus three—that's thirteen. 
Yep. 10 minus 1, that's a 9. That's awful. Uh, 17 minus 3 is a 14. And the last one is a 12 minus 2 for a 10. Okay, that's good. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. essentially, anything above 12 is a positive. Anything below, I think, 8 is negative. So if you're in the sort of 9 to 12 range, it's it's neither here or there. It's, it's no I'm better than Tracy, though, right? <laughs> that's Yeah. Looking wow. at it okay, right yeah. now, um, Tracy is very <laughs> average straight across the board, but she does have one stat. But we can, we still can work with that. Trust me. Okay. Are you just so shit talking your... me when I'm away from the computer? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. didn't know you were away from the computer. Yeah. I can't see you. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I will be. I will be above average in role playing. How about that? That's you're right. above average yeah. in our heart, Tracy. Aww, just think of it. Just think of it. Look this way. When you're so, you know, uh, physically challenged, if you do succeed, it's no, much, <laughs> much better feeling. I feel like this is a gnome thing. I feel like I'm already <laughs> being discriminated against because I'm a like, So it's like, is Tracy on our team because of affirmative action or something? Or is, is, or it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> one poor cool. little one poor little character that we need to have on our team. I'm somebody's little brother. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got a few strong characters, so if we need to toss her, we can... No, I'm playing her. She's... Oh, wait, you no, mean... She's, she's not a dwarf. <laughs> she's not a dwarf. I mean... <laughs> oh, my God. We're all going to get in huge trouble when this gets uploaded. Can you, like, cut this part out, Neil? Like, we're going to yeah, have hey, to. Hey, this is not... P we're not PC. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm on my PC. None of those woke people. This <laughs> <laughs> is no, we're all good. We're all good. We love gnomes. No short statured races. Great. I mean, for God's sake, we're gonna have a guy with horns out of his head. <laughs> right? <laughs> <That is true. laughs> all right. Okay. Very so true. we've got the ability roles. So now we can assign them to our attributes. So. Uh, okay, let's go with... Okay, we'll go with Tracy because we know what Tracy wanted to be. Um, you wanted to be... You want Not to cast average. <laughs> Miss Average Spellcaster. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, I want to be a spellcaster, so I'm presuming it goes in my intelligence, my highest score. So, yeah, so if you want to be a magic user, because there's, there's, there's a few different... There's magic users... <laughs> And there's illusion. I should actually talk about classes um, because you might decide to change your mind. Where is it? So the classic ones is magic user, cast spells, cleric, does holy stuff, um, fighter, pretty obvious, bashes things, and a thief steals things and does sneaky stuff. Um, so they're the classic um, character classes. And then we have... Acrobats, which is a variation on a thief, but obviously more along the walking on tight ropes and climbing up sheer surfaces. Uh, we have assassins, again, variation on a thief, but they like to kill people. Uh, barbarians, the classic fur clad, skimpy clothing, doesn't seem to feel the cold, but likes bashing things, not too bright. Um, there's your barbarian, good in the wilderness. Uh, bard, who I think, from what Emma's told me, she's keen to be a bard. Um, so, you know, storyteller, musician, um, can normally talk themselves out of a fight rather than actually fighting. Um, they are a bit magical too. Bards can do some, some magic at higher levels um, because they're in tune with the natural world. So they do, I think, druid spells, I think. Uh uh, you can be a druid, I just mentioned. So that's a more of a naturalistic sort of David Attenborough wizard. <laughs> um, then we have uh, Illusionist, which is, again, spellcaster, but most of the spells are obviously some more of illusions rather than lightning bolts. Uh, then you can be a knight, which is obviously a variation on the fighter class, but they are a little bit more military order strict, you know, rules of chivalry and all that sort of stuff. 
Then you go to a Paladin, which is like a knight, but on overkill. So it goes really holy, you know, must defeat evil or whatever. And they can, Paladins can use some cleric spells. Uh, Ranger, which is your classic sort of Aragorn from all the rings, you know, um, out in the wilderness, hunting things and protecting the, the, um, the borderlands or the borders of the civilized world from whatever incursions, you know, Paladin, uh, Rangers, they, 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 they move around a lot. Um, and then I think that's most of the classes. Um, we do have some extra classes like a beast master, um, which is essentially like a bit like a ranger, but you have a bit more in tune with animals. Um, but they're, they're the main ones. Now I want to talk about multi-classing. Um, so in, as, as I understand it in fifth edition, you can be multiple classes. I think you can, I don't know if there's a limitation or not, but you can be multiple classes. You can also be multiple classes in this as well. Um, but, uh, there's a trade-off. So, in the get the rules as it stands now you you go up in levels as you progress you get more experience you get more levels you get more skills and spells and so on <coughs> game at the moment taps out at level 14. if you become if you decide to be a multi-class so for example classic one is a fighter thief all right if you want to be a fighter thief you have you get both abilities from both classes but your maximum level is tapped out at seven for each class so your 14 is split in two so you're seven do you want to go three classes then you'll be whatever it is four four three or something know, whatever um you'll eat, but i would not recommend people going um three classes because then you only tapped out maximum level about four or whatever so if you're going to be a multi-class um you a fighter thief or a, um, a magic user thief or you know two classes would be what i recommend would be the maximum that you choose um so okay so if we go back to murph again so you're you want to be a tiefling yeah. uh, and, and also in this so in the rules as are written there are some limitations on what classes you can be um yeah depending on your race i'm not going to employ that so you can i'm not going to have any limitations so you can be whatever okay. so I, I, my, my question is what's, what's the difference between like a cleric and a mage okay so mage in one of the expansions mage is actually a class but i i don't think i'll use that one because it's 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 but mage is yeah essentially in this game a, a wizard if you want to call it that mm -hmm. a mage whatever you want to call it is a magic user that's the class Okay, so cleric's more like a, a, a healer. A cleric is a it, it's it's a, it's a it's it's a religious warrior. So they can wear armor, they can have shields, they can have maces, they can smash things. They have spells. Most of their spells um, are yeah. generally of the healing type um, perfect so yeah. you, you could be a cleric yeah that i think that that works for the uh the race that i've chosen yeah, uh, yeah. to be to be a cleric yeah God so, wills it, you know yeah 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 so i mean if you're really full-on like almost like a knights of the templar or whatever on the crusades yeah you know, exactly you, yeah you, yeah you, you you're kind of like a cleric if you're going pretty full-on you'd go like a paladin but i think you're a tiefling so I, I guess maybe you you are of a demon ancestor but mm -hmm. you're trying to sort of resist that a little bit by going more clerical so you're trying to That's, sort of yeah so there's a little bit of the a uh, little bit of balancing between um you know being thrown my lot in with the the evil evil demons but at the same time i can help people yeah yeah or yeah. or whatever I, i'm not exactly sure of the pc um uh, what's like a an orc or they're not people like they're characters i guess yeah so um or not so you know? so, so the tiefling, dying, screw you <laughs> okay so for a tiefling you have to have a minimum intelligence of nine okay um if you're going to be a cleric uh their prime requisite is wisdom so okay. uh, in this in this game uh, your prime requisite it does give some abilities like if you're a magic user that gives you more spells 
Um, it doesn't necessarily give you any benefits as a cleric. It just says that you have to be, you have to have a, a, a high score in your wisdom score. It does give you benefits to saving throws, I think, against spells. Um, and um, it, 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 your prime requisite gives you an experience points bonus. So if you've got okay. a certain level, you get 10% extra or 15% extra experience points. Mm. So um, clerics are, are, they need to have good wisdom. Generally, they're a, they can fight. So st strength and constitution is always good to have reasonable numbers in. Um, being a tiefling, uh, you'll get plus one for your dexterity anyway. So whatever score you put into your dexterity thing, you're going to add one to it anyway. Nice. Uh, the wisdom is actually... In, the wisdom of tiefling is minus one. So, but you want to be a cleric. So you're going to have to maybe put a higher ability in and it's going to go down by one. So for example, you rolled a 15, you might want to put a 15 in wisdom. Yeah, it will go down to 14, but it's still going to be the same benefit. It's still going to be a plus one um, benefit. Um, so that might be a way to go. So, uh, so <clears throat> looking at your numbers, any number above 13, uh, is plus one uh, no one's only got no one's got any negatives which is good uh, i think even the eight i think the cost the number of a tracy got an eight i don't think that gives any negatives no i did not get an eight my okay. is fine i'm just like mediocre all the way oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, actually no, debbie, debbie got an eight no tracy i'm debbie goldilocks not. basically without the hair so Debbie got an eight, which is a minus one. Um, nine to 12 is no benefit. 13 to 15 is plus one. So a lot of you guys have got plus ones. And, and then Debbie also has a 17, which is a plus two. I think from memory. Okay. Um, yeah. So Debbie has Debbie's the mo has a minus one for, for the eight and a plus two for the 17. Everyone else, if you've got 13 or higher, it's a plus one. And the rest of the abilities are all basically zero. So, so actually, yeah, you, you're all, you'd all be pretty happy with your roles, really, to be perfectly frank. So getting back to Murph. Um, all right. So uh, you've got two 15s, two 12s, a 14 mm -hmm. and a 9. Um, like I said, you're going you're gonna to get a plus one on your dexterity. You're going to get a minus one on your wisdom. So where would you like to put your abilities? So if you go, um, for, let's do the, right. let's do your pre prerequisite first for your wizard, which is uh, wisdom, which is your, for your cleric. You right. want to put one of your high numbers in uh, wisdom? Yeah, I'm going to put a, um, a fifteen in that. Okay, so you put a fifteen. That'll take it down to a fourteen because you're a tiefling, right? Um, and okay, so that and then you got another ability where you want to put that. Um, okay, so that's so that's a fourteen in wisdom, even though yep. it should be added. I don't even add like plus one to that. Uh, no, that the plus one is a, is like a bonus. We won't get into that later. But for now, just okay. All right. wisdom is fourteen. Gotcha. All right, so that's fourteen. Yep, uh, which is a minus one. I'm going to put um, um, intelligence. I'm going to put a twelve in intelligence. Yep, that's what I would have done. Yep. Now, because you're, um, a, you, you're a fighter, you probably want to have good strength and constitution. Okay, yeah. Uh, so strength, I'm going to throw a my 14 into uh, constitution. Okay. And I'm going to throw... Uh, to cross that out. Um, ooh... What do we got left? Uh, I'm going to go 15 into strength. Yep. Um, 12 into dexterity. Okay, and that will become a 13. That will become? Because that gives you a plus one. You... Okay, so, all right, so that, sorry, that goes 13. And that leaves you a nine strength. in your charisma. So 13 there. And you're right, exactly, because in charisma it says like loyalty, and I've got a feeling that uh, since I'm a devil worshiper, um, I'm, I'm probably not all that loyal. Well, charisma is your personality. Oh, well, great. Yeah. So you're kind of, yeah. Yeah. You're okay. All right, so, uh, yeah, yeah people, I'm showing people. could be a little bit intimidated by horns or whatever. Actually, we need to get into that because you're a yeah. tiefling. So there are actually. So, 
you yeah. Know, well I'll, I'll look that. for a picture. Um, so I'm, I'm showing 15 strength, 12 intelligence, 14 wisdom, 12 in dexterity. Uh, 13 well, dexterity in becomes 13 now because you're a tiefling. Oh, 13, right. And consti the constitution was a, was that 12? 14. 14. And then nine for your charisma. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, yeah. so that's your abilities. Um, so the 15, right. uh, I, I can't remember on the character sheet or not, but there'll be a, I think there's a little box for your your a bonus or whatever. So it's going to be a plus one on the 15, nothing on the 12, plus one on 14, plus one on the 13, plus one on the 14, and nothing on the nine. Um, those abilities, like for example, 15 is plus one, so that means you give you a plus one to do hit or plus one to do extra damage. Constitution is a 14, which is a plus one, which means that you get an extra hit point. Awesome. Um, so essentially, but you're just, just writing your abilities for now. Um, one thing yeah. I do about um, tieflings. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So they have a fiendish appearance. So sometimes they might have horns or they might have fangs or there's something that makes them look obviously gotcha. so we're going to do that so that you've at least got an idea of what your character looks like so you're going to roll a d10 this time so 10 a d10 a 10 sided dice uh, a d Okay, I guess I have to add all these up together, do I? Now you're just going to roll one d10. You're not you're not multi rolling multiples. You're just going to roll one d10, and I'll tell you what physical uh, fiendish appearance you have. I'm not sure how to do that. Um, Are you using a dice roller online? Uh, yeah, the I have an app. Yeah. Oh, okay. So can it allow you to choose which type of die you're rolling? It says numbers. So you can go from like one to whatever. That's how many die show up. And they did numbers on each dice are from like one to are six. Are you on the dnddiceroller.com? No, but I'm going to. Yeah, <laughs> it's really good. Probably easier. <laughs> DND Dice Roller Online. Okay. Uh, so is it rollerdie.net or is this? Oh, DND Dice Roller. Got it. All right. Here we go. Yep. Okay, so you can choose the number of dice and the kind of dice. <clears throat> so one, I can go D10. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Oh, there it is. It uh, says eight. Eight. Yeah. Ah, okay. Is you good? have scaly or ridge skin. <laughs> That's what my doctor like tells me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think you can get a talk cream for that. Should clear it up. Can you talk to your doctor about psoriasis? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, oh my it's god! Scaly, what is it? Scaly skin? It's scaly or ridge skin? <laughs> I will let you decide ridge. how you want it to look. <laughs> but essentially, are you an undead demon skin. with scaly skin? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're a bit lizardy. <laughs> nice. I'm a. I got thick skin then. Great. <laughs> okay, now you have to also do another roll because you do have some fiendish gifts. So this is the Ooh, I like of it. That. The roll you do again. All right. I hope it's a set of fiendish dishes. It, yeah. <laughs> what? You said fiendish. it's fiendish gifts. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it's a ten. A ten. Okay. Yeah. So. Yes, you've got scaly and ridge skin, but you have a plus two bonus to save versus poison. So maybe there was some sort of snaky sort of type cre a creature, that, a demon that was in your ancestry. So you do have some scaly or ridge skin, but you have a plus two bonus to save versus poison. So just make a note of that. And then when we save, when you do yeah. your saving throws, we will... Um, uh, adjust the poison saving throw because you've awesome. got that plus two bonus. Right. So that's actually right. quite good. So um, you don't have to worry about the you know, you know, chance huh? of you dying from poison. It's going to be pretty low. For someone's bad cooking. One other thing to know about tieflings is they have a holy water vulnerability. 
vulnerability. Vuln- I can't talk today. They don't like holy water. Um, uh, the power of Christ, you know that. Yeah, <laughs> all that sort of thing. You're which is that's right. for a wizard, you're a cleric as well. So it's kind of like you're going to be handling dangerous goods because you're going to be, you're going to, that's right. Because clerics I do, do have holy water, they carry it around with them. So I'm, uh, I'm going to need a hazmat suit. I got to need a hazmat suit. You're going to have tongs and sort of carry it around and blow it out. <laughs> so yeah, you yeah. do, you are vulnerable to damage by holy water. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can I'm see in the dark, do. though, you have infravision. Nice. So infravision is kind of like, you know, well, you're probably you're familiar with it, but you probably like you know, vision goggles. Yeah, but you can't. It's actually not, it's actually not quite as good as night vision goggles. You'll kind of see silhouettes of you know, hot and cold. So uh, a creature will look <clears throat> like a, well, a glowing silhouette is essentially nice to you. You won't see details, but you'll see the silhouette. So you you have infravision, so. and most demi humans do have infravision. So so I think that's. I mean, when when we're offline, we can put in your saving throws and everything like that. But essentially, you are a tiefling cleric. You've got your abilities. Um, We now know what you look like. Uh, And so that should give you enough to come up with a a short background for your character. So I have have one. Paragraph. Don't don't do a really elaborate background because you're you're a level zero character so your background is going to be what you're doing you you only really have to come up for a reason why you want to be an adventurer and being a tiefling you're probably shunned by most societies so probably that's probably good enough reason to to be to be an adventurer anyway anyway so So happy with that yeah i picked a name oh you got a name even better yeah yeah um oh you're male or female we didn't even decide if you're male or female oh i'm not answering that Okay. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to. We're not going to discuss pronouns. I'm, no, it's, like uh, it's 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 male, <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's, the name is uh, Freyord. Ooh. F R E L J O R D. Okay. Interesting. And the X is silent. <laughs> A Norwegian team. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I figured. There's something from like the the mountainous, snowy region of wherever they come from. Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay, Thanks. great. All right, Tracy. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go get, get a drink. Right back. Yeah, from the Tracy. from the mountainous region of hell. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's right. The, 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 snowy ski, the, ski, the, the ski fields of hell. Yeah. It's the, the, one <laughs> one does not simply waltz into Mordor. Right? <laughs> All right, Tracy. There we All go. right me my mediocre gnome all right uh, so we, we will get to that shortly because you can modify your abilities How? so you can you can lower your uh either your strength intelligence wisdom you can ro- lower them uh by one or two uh for every two that you lower you can raise your pre- prerequisite by one Strength, intelligence, or wisdom are the ones I can lower? Yeah. So if you want to be a magic user, you want to put your best ability in intelligence. Yeah. So you have a 13. <clears throat> you could put the 13 in intelligence. That gives you a plus one. If you wanted to, you could um, try and raise it by... If you try to raise it to... I mean, if you raise it by one, it'll be 14. It's still going to be a plus one. And if you raise it by two, it's still going to be a plus one because it's going to be fifteen. So, um, but you, but you can, you could do, you could, but you. I mean, you might want to try and boost your constitution or something like that. But I mean, your, your, your abilities. You know are what? I'm going to stick with what I have. I, I'm going to be middle of the road gnome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but. So in that case, this will make it really simple because you're all, Mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter where you put things. um, Well, I'm going to put my 13 in intelligence. Yep, that would be logical. Uh, And and then then, I guess probably the other thing would be, I'm going to be super. Oh, actually, before we do anything, I'll just check if there's any, um, any, uh, Bonuses for being teeny tiny. 
Yeah, yeah, I'll just double check that. Being good at handling a tiny shovel, freezing for long periods of time, so people don't know that I'm there, that I'm moving. I could just be like, that should be an ability that gnomes have. I feel like that should be an added ability to okay, freeze. Okay, gnomes have, have to have, okay, through. here we go. Gnomes have yeah. to have a minimum constitution of nine. Okay. Their prerequisites are dexterity and intelligence. So you're going to have to put your best scores in dexterity and intelligence. <laughs> you're kidding me. <laughs> Okay, so then, well, I was already going to do that for intelligence. So 13 intelligence, 11 dexterity. Damn it. I was going to put that in my constitution. Um, and then 10 in constitution. Hang on just one second. Sorry. I'm just going to make yep. sure I'm looking at because in this game, you can play a gnome as a as a as a class in itself. Uh, or you can play it as a race and then choose a class. Um, oh. So, if you play gnome as a class, it it already has some sort of spells in in it. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do a gnome as a race. Let me just get to. Hang on. We'll go back to. It. <clears throat> I think we'll, I think we'll be okay. Um, yeah, I'll have to double check that. But okay, let's just go with the signing abilities. So, um, okay. dexterity and intelligence are um, prerequisites for the gnome. So, do they have gonna... to be at a certain level? Like, do I have the right numbers that I can be that? Then? They're all they're all fine. There's only the only the only minimum number is constitution has to be at least nine. Okay, so. Uh, Intelligence 13, Dexterity 11, Constitution 10. Yep. 13, 11, 10. Oh. Um, strength 9, Wisdom 10, and Charisma 9. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think you don't have a, a lot of flexibility to adjust because you, you, you've got pretty low rolls. So and if you and you don't really want to get a situation where you're going into negative. Um, in fact, I don't think you can lower any ability below nine anyway, doing it that way. So you're pretty much stuck with, with what you've got. So, okay. So now you want to be a, is it, you're going to be a magic user. Okay. Uh, oh, um, Now you're going to have uh, you do get a defensive bonus because you're a small size. If if you're attacked by larger than human sized characters, you get a plus two bonus to your armor class because you're a bit harder to hit. Um, greater than human size, or just human size and greater? Greater than human size. Okay. Okay. Um, now you're a magic user, so and your intelligence is thirteen. So with spells, we're we're gonna we're, we won't choose the spells now because you can go through and look at the spells that you want to put in. Um, you're going to have uh, again. This is slightly not as the rules are written, but I'm going to let you be able to choose four spells. Um. The way the rules, the, you can only cast one spell a day at level one. You can only cast one spell. So that's a bit different from fifth edition. Um, magic users in this game are very weak at the start. Like very, very weak. Um, they die very easily, but they become powerful um, pretty as they move through the levels. The spells they actually have that they can cast are quite powerful, but um, you want to be essentially cowering behind people and using meat shields <laughs> a lot in the early early stages mm -hmm. um so you're gonna have uh, you have read magic as an automatic that's one of your spells and then you'll be able to choose three more which i'll let you choose um you can look at the first level spells and you can choose three of them 
And then what you do essentially in the game is you can um, memorize one spell every day. So the next day you can cast, you know, you cast that one spell. So you might be able to cast sleep. And then the next day you might learn magic missile and you can use, cast that and other spells. So, yeah. And then level two, you'll have two spells, level three, three spells and so on. Um, and you'll be able to cast more spells each day as well. But for now, you're a, a gnome, magic user, uh, male or female? Assuming you're, you're female. Human, female. Have you got a name in mind? No, not yet. Okay. Um, one thing that we'll also do is hit points. Now, normally, if you were playing this as written, you would roll for your hit points. For first level, I don't do that. I'm going to give you your maximum hit points. So, Murph, you're mm -hmm. tiefling. Um, tieflings, yep. um, a cleric is a 1d6 normally, so you would have six hit points. So you're going to have your maximum number of hit points to start for first level. But because you have a constitution of 14, you're going to have seven. Seven hit points. You're going to have seven hit points. Tracy, uh, you're a magic user or a gnome, they're 1d4. So you, uh, you don't have any constitution bonus, so you're going to have four hit points. So basically, you could die from a paper cut. So basically, guys, don't get attached to the gnome, is what we're hearing. No, no. Doesn't, no she's not very useful. Seven hit points. Yeah. She's just kind of there. Yeah, this game is this game is deadly, by the way. So if you it, you know, do not be afraid of running away. <laughs> you you did say there's no raising the dead in your version. Uh if you, know, you there is raising the dead, but it's expensive and it's not easy to organize. So it's not like you can drive down to the local kiosk, raise your dead kiosk <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> so, Show out know, your dead. Raise, yeah, the, raise, the raise dead. your dead or raise your dead. Uh, so uh, I'm not dead yet. You're not dead. Got yet. it off a two raise two dead for the price of one. <laughs> So yeah, I mean yes, dead dead can be risen, but it's you, there isn't things like death saves in this game or anything like that. So yeah, yeah it's your 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 character. Let me die. You, 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 at this level, <laughs> you are not much better than an average Joe Bo, Joe Blow public. You know, you 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 have some skills, but you're not superhuman or superhero ish. You may become superhero ish um, in time, but you are very, you're quite weak. So uh, sometimes discretion is the better part of valor and it might be better to run away from a fight rather than get, you know, stand your ground. So keep that in mind. All right, so I think we're okay with Tracy. Um, things like saving throws and all that, you can actually find them in the book and then you just put them in your stats. You don't have any benef bonuses to your um, saving throws because all your abilities are pretty much neutral. Okay, so we will now move to Brad. Sure. So, what did you you want? You were going to be a human. Humans I want to be a druid. Get a bonuses as well. Druid. Okay. Mm. I want to be a druid. You want to be a druid? Yeah. I do. Okay. But like a nice. Because with him being in the forest right now, he's trying to appease the bear. Yeah. I, I looked. I looked for like a monk for a long time, and I'm like, there's just no like hermit monk available so i'm i think druid's the closest there is, i can there get there is a character class that's not a monk but it's called a kineticist oh which is kind of like martial artsy but they don't cast spells but they do have some you know sort of bruce lee sort of things <clears throat> yeah i want to be like part druid part fighter or assassin and just kind of rely on a little bit of magic and a little bit of uh, murder. Okay, so yeah, a fighter druid would probably be the way to go. Okay. Nice. So let's just look at druids and see what their abilities are. Um, let's see what page druid's on. Druid's on 16, okay. So looking at druids, druids, their primary requisite is wisdom. But for a fighter, it's strength. So you're going to need to probably put your best two abilities in wisdom and strength. Uh, being a human, you get a some bonuses. Um, let me just uh, <laughs> double check. On, just like in real life. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so where is it? Okay, so human. 
you will get plus one to your constitution and plus one to your charisma. Okay. So, like we said, yeah, strength for your fighter strength is Strength and wisdom is what I want to be good at. Prime yeah. requisite for druid. So, where do you want to put? What do you want to put in your? Strength? Do you have my? Uh, do you have my numbers on hand? Yeah. So you've got a fifteen, an eleven, a thirteen, a nine, a fourteen, and a ten. 15, 11, 13, 14, 9, and 10? Yeah. Okay. Now, something taken, um, then, so you have a 15. If you put that in Constitution, for example, that 15 will become 16, which will 16. give you a plus 2. That's good for hit points. Yeah. Yeah, let's do the Constitution. Let's do that with the 15. Make that the 16. Okay. Um and it's better to like end on the even number, right? How do you mean? Like, it, if I was at fifteen at Constitution, oh, so thir- uh, 13, 14, 15 is plus one. Sixteen, seventeen is plus two. Oh, so if I get to sixteen, I get the x the plus two. Okay. Yeah, that's why I thought you put, if you put your constitution into fifteen and you had your bonus from being a human, it'll make you sixteen and gives you plus two hit points, which is good. Okay. Um, well, just like also in real life, I don't really need to have high charisma, so I'm going to put the nine in charisma. Use the plus one on that, get it to ten. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's see. Dexterity. So you're gonna, you're gonna... I don't really need high dexterity. Let's slot 10 in for dexterity, too. Okay. And I want to have high strength and high wisdom. So let's do 14 for wisdom, 13 for strength. Yep. And I think my leftover for intelligence is 11. Yep. Cool. Excellent. So uh, being a druid... um, don't think you get a spell at first level. Um, go back to Didn't want one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, no, you do. You have a spell. What? Give it to me. If you didn't want it, give it to me. <laughs> at level one, you have one druid spell. So, um, is it Grace the Dead? Can- I'll let you choose the spell um, <laughs> yourself offline. Um, but uh, you, you're allowed to cast one spell a day. Um, your constitute so hit points. Okay, so because you're multi-classing, so fighters are normally 1d8. Um, druids are 1d6. Now, how does this work? I need to double check about multi-classing. Um... Multiple classes, page 51. Here we go. Could roll a D7. <laughs> hit points. When determining hit points, a character creation upon gaining level, any hit points gained are divided by the number of classes. Uh, so, for example... Oh, so I roll one of each and then divide by two? So, for example, a fighter thief character gains a thief level of the player rolls 1D4 for hit points. The result is a three. Means you gain one. Another. Okay, so you'll get half of each. So... For your start. So a fighter would, would be 1d8. So okay, half that, I'm that's 4. Right. So you're going to half that. Five on my, I got a 5 on my d8. No, you, know, you don't have to roll for this. For first level, you don't have to roll. You will have to roll for level 2 and so on. But just for your start, oh, you're going to okay. get your maximum that you can get. So a fighter is a 1d8 normally. We're going to half that. So you're going to have 4 hit points for the fighter class. A druid is 1d6. So you're going to halve that, so three. So that makes you seven. And then you've got plus two bones for your constitution. So you're going to be nine. So you're going to be a bit of a was, tough tough guy. I was told there would not be math. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's hit points, nine? Yep, so you're going to be nine. Uh, Murph is seven. Tracy is four. So, okay, so you're Drew. Do you have a, you're, are a male or female? I'm a dude. Dude, and you have a name in mind, or you want to come I up do. with that later? Uh, my name's my name is Renault. R E N O L T. Renault. Uh-huh. Renault. I thought you were gonna go French. R E N A U L T. 
Yeah, like I- I'm built like the car. I'm just spelled differently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have one. Okay, you're a cleric. So uh, I think uh, you're a magic user. <laughs> Okay, so we're not, we've, we've got a good. You got three three spellcasters right here. There, I mean, clerics don't start with a spell at first level; they get a spell at the second level. So, for first level, you're just going to bash things, Murph, and then when you get up to second level, you have the first spell. Um, Brad and Tracy will have one spell each at the start. Um, I will probably talk to you offline for email or whatever, Brad, about your druid spells. Um, but that's probably all we need to go on with for now. And so we're up to Debbie. Lucky oh. last. <laughs> so, uh, did you, you were going to be a human, weren't you? Yes. And I'm thinking of being an illusionist. Ooh. Oh, another spellcaster. Okay. We're going to be a whole team of spellcasters. <laughs> Sucking away. Yeah. So let's go to an illusionist. Let me look at what illusionist is. Okay, so for an illusionist, you have to have a minimum dexterity of nine, and your prime requisite is intelligence. Uh, do you have my number written down? I forgot to write write it yeah, down. Yeah, you have an eleven, a seventeen, a twelve, a fifteen, an eight, and a ten. Now. Being a human again, you'll get a plus one for your constitution and plus one for your charisma. So that will help. So, for example, that eight, you can put that into charisma and it will become nine, for example. Um, So there would be no penalty there because nine is is neutral. Um, But for an illusionist, your primary requisite is intelligence. So you're going, you want to put a high number in there. So probably either your 17 or your 15. I probably pro- uh, I probably put my seventeen in intelligence. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and then for um, you have to have a minimum dexterity of nine, but you're so that's okay. Well, you could put maybe a your eleven or twelve or your ten in dexterity. Okay. I'll put the twelve. Twelve. Okay. So twelve in dexterity. Uh, so that leaves you strength, wisdom, constitution, and charisma. I think I'll put eight in strength. Eight in strength. So that's going to be a minus one bow. So you're going to be a bit of a weakling. Yes. I okay. imagine she can't really burst open door or anything. <laughs> yeah. Le- yeah. You'll be- if you have to open the pickle jar, you'll give it to um, to Brad because me. he's the stronger one. <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> At least I could open the pickle jar. I'm stronger than that. All right, here's a whole box of pickle jars. <laughs> but I like have to hold it like this, like. <gasps> You're not you quite that me. small, but anyway. Okay, so uh, wisdom. Um, I think gnomes are about three foot tall. I think from memory, something like that. I don't know. I have some gnomes that are pretty teeny. They're pretty. They're about the same sort of size as your halflings. What is that? Oh, it's a gnome. It's a Mexican. It's a Spanish gnome. It's what it is. Is you know the Travelocity. I don't know if you guys know Travelocity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My Canadian friends. Uh, that's the yeah. Roman gnome, but he's got maracas tied to him. They're actually like tied on. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be hard to sneak around if you've got maracas tied to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> so as he walks along, does it go? He's trying to walk silently and it's like You're like, don't put her out front. And when and when he's about to um run away, does he go underla underla eha? He's a bit of a he's a man so made of fastest mills in Mexico. Hit the bricks, I say. He's a grasshopper. Let's get the grasshopper. <laughs> Sorry, I'm channeling my old Warner, Warner Brothers cartoon. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Showing show my age now. Hmm. Okay, get so today, Debbie, get back to that. So you have strength of eight, intelligence of 17. You've got 12 in your dexterity. That leaves your wisdom, constitution, and charisma. Which one is it going to be? 
Uh, what is charisma used for? Charisma is how um, your personal, your people skills, how attractive you are, how personable, you know, are you good at conversation? So, for example, if you're going to be a bard, you want to have high charisma because obviously you, you're a people person, you're a storyteller, you're an entertainer. Um, you're an illusionist, so maybe you can just make yourself look appear, appear to be <laughs> gorgeous, whatever. Um, you're going to cast the Maybelline spell. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, this sparkles. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you can case. hear it, but my dogs seem to have just gone nuts. Can hear it. Hang on. I'm going to have to just edit point. I've got my two puppies who just have gone nuts. Just give me a second. <laughs> I hadn't thought about the fact that uh, magic users in this version of the game are like super useless. <laughs> so I'm gonna have fun playing her. <laughs> Annoying as she's going to be. I'm pretty sure I start at four hit point as well. Are you gonna start at four as well? I think so. Uh, Awesome. I think Illusion does the same as Magic User with the hit dice. Probably. Are you human? Yes. Okay. Yeah, neither one of us can wear any damn armor, so we're like super squishy. <laughs> and squishy? my weapon. And, yeah, and the only weapon I can use is a dagger, which requires me to get really close to people trying to hit me. Oh, right? You can take out knee. You can like carve up kneecaps and stuff. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's me. Slice their <laughs> hamstring. Ow! Ooh. We're all in agreement that we're going to spend all of our money buying characters that we just like throw into the mess, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm seriously gonna, like pimp out a bunch of minions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I get a six pack of them and just throw them in. Throw them in. Yeah. No, no, I don't. I don't want the muscular ones. I want the ones in the in the Star Trek red shirts. Thank you. <laughs> Go forth and die gloriously. Yeah. Da, 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 you know. <laughs> so you're like, I don't want to know your name because I know you're going to die. Aww. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I I came up with a name for my character, but I'll wait until Neil comes back because I don't know if he's going to cut all this stuff out. So. I, I like charisma being like mediocre because then I can be like I'm super attractive but a total bitch or I'm like really nice <laughs> but completely ugly. <laughs> You're just insufferable. Yeah, um, I'm like Kelly LeBrock. Like, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. No, I hate you because you're a bitch. <laughs> not the real Kelly LeBrock. I'm sure she's not, but I hated those commercials. The passion with the passion for Kelly LeBrock. <laughs> laughing all the way to the bank. So is that going to be your character's name, Kelly LeBrock? No! <laughs> K-Brock. Yeah, K-Brock. K-Brock? No. Yeah, but make, but make it like French, like Q-U-E. Yeah, that's right. K-Brock. Or Italian, K-Brock. Yeah. How about Belly LeCroc? Sorry about that. My my two beagles decided that they were going to protect our, mm -hmm. our fa family's right. honor. And they were they saw a cat, so they just went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a cat in Australia, so it's like eight feet long and it's got like saber tooth teeth, right? It'll kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It can kill you, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Poisonous uh, thing. My two my sure. two valiant beagle puppies were just going nuts about it. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so where were we? Uh that's right, we were finishing off Debbie's character. So You've got Wisdom, Constitution, and Charisma to go. Debbie? For, for my class, which one will be the most important of the three left? Uh, illusionist, your prime requisite is Intelligence. So you've already got that covered. So you just want to... Um, uh, you've got a, an 11, a 15, and a 10 left. You might want to if I put 15. 15 on either Constitution and Charisma, it will become a 16. Yep. So that will give you a plus two, which will be handy. 
Oh, that it? Uh, oh, yeah. Right. And then wisdom. <clears throat> so, I think I'll put uh, eleven for wisdom. Yep. Fifteen. That would leave you ten in constitution, which becomes an eleven. Yeah. yeah. And then charisma will be sixteen. Char- char- charisma will be a, a you've got a ten that goes into charisma. Hmm? I don't think she decided that. She was thinking. Yeah, I think right now I have a ten and um fifteen left for either constitution or charisma. Yeah. Did you say you wanted to put the fifteen in constitution? Uh actually. Yes, let's do that. Because that'll give you a that'll become a sixteen, which will give you plus two bonus to your hit points. Cool. And so that, okay, so that leaves you so your abilities are eight for strength, seventeen for intelligence. 11 for wisdom, 12 for dexterity, 15 in constitution, which again becomes 16 because you're human, and charisma is 10, which becomes 11. And for hit points, an illusionist is normally a 1d4, so that would mean you would have four hit points, but you've got your constitution is 16, which gives you plus two, so your hit points are six. Yay. So you won't die from a paper cut like Tracy. <laughs> But I would die from two paper cuts. <laughs> two paper cuts, and then you're gone. Yeah, that's right. Death by paper cut. <laughs> but I mean, a, but, I mean, at this point, you're all you're all first level, a uh, zero level, sorry. So, uh, or level is it level one? Whatever you're, you're low level. So even Brad at, at, at um, nine could die from three paper cuts. <laughs> <laughs> no lemon juice on those paper cuts. Uh, I came up with a name for my character. Her name is yeah. Clover. 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 Like a four leaf clover. It's even on both sides. She's like mediocre. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. Even Stevens. So Clover, Renault. So uh, Murph, can you spell your tiefling's name again? Oh, I have a good a bad name. Okay, uh F R E L J O R D. Threl Threl how do you say it? Freyord. Freyord. Ah, Frey or is silent. I'm gonna write it phonetically because I'm gonna call you Freljord if I don't. I'm gonna say I'm not I'm not gonna ever say it right intentionally. It's gonna be like an ongoing oh. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I bother with this game? Okay. <laughs> Debbie, Debbie, you're a human illusionist. Do you have any idea of what name you or do you have uh, a name? Clove? I think Clover I'm gonna go <laughs> cool. I think I'm gonna go with Elise. Elise. Yeah, E E L I S E. Yes. I think you should also go with Clover. Crimson. <laughs> For one and Clover too. <laughs> Crimson. <laughs> Two Clovers on our team. Crimson and Clover. See yeah. that? Uh, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. you know, last name. <laughs> I I'm gonna be Crimson and Clover when I die in a horrible bloody oh. paper cut battle. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you're crimson. You're yeah, like, you like, like, so we find out y'all are like related. Jelly color. <laughs> What's that? Are you talking talk to me? Yeah. What did you say? You talk I say you'll probably more be. You'll kind of be jelly. <laughs> jelly. You'll probably be squished jelly by cover. something. You'll be like this sort of jello gnome. <laughs> I, I feel like you're already planning my death by gelatinous cube. I would, never do like. I, would, I would never do that. I would never do that. I'm 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 a I'm a benevolent GM. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna say if I die by gelatinous cube, then you guys have to like make some toast and send me off by eating me on your toast. <laughs> All right. Okay, so We've got a, a, a cleric, we've got a druid fighter, we have a magic user and an illusionist. So we've got a few, quite a few spell cast. In fact, everyone's a spell caster. There you go. Um, and Brad and Murph can do the heavy lifting on the fighting side. But like I said, it's probably a good idea. Uh, and, we, and we've still got M to do. Um, although I think M was going to be a bard. So she's also going to be a magic user. <laughs> I think she said she wanted to be a bard assassin. Ooh. That sounds I like the, I think she's got this whole um what's that what's that um video game with the assassin? Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed, isn't it? Assassin's Creed. 
Yeah, I think she's got some sort of Assassin's Creed vibe going. But anyway, anyway nice. but we'll find out. She may completely change her mind. We'll find out. I, I will probably do a separate thing with her to um, create her character. Um, so, but you can. Uh, so, what you? Oh, uh, that, oh, this is your thing. We have to do. We have to work out how much money you have. Oh, oh please let me be rich. <laughs> 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 because that's what the money you're going to have to buy your equipment and armor and mm. everything else. Okay. Um, pay retainers. Yeah, and pay and pay retainers. Yes, exactly. So, if you're a magic user cool. illusion, I think you get a spell book. You'll already automatically have a spell book because it's kind of like okay. when you go to wizardy school, you um, you have a book to write all your stuff in. Um, and I think a cleric, I think you get a holy symbol automatically because you obviously you're religious um druids i think you might get a stick <laughs> <laughs> I mean, i'm gonna get a stick right now <laughs> <laughs> this is stick i call him sticky <laughs> you can only talk up with your holding the stick <laughs> yeah. that's right it's the talking stick <laughs> did he um, really go get a stick <laughs> he probably, probably did um, let me just double check about Druid 16. Okay. Ah, okay, that's interesting. Brad? Yeah. As, oh, he's got a stick. There you go. There's that's sticky. It. Sticky the stick. <laughs> as, as a Druid, you cannot wear metal armor or like shields. So that means you're going to be a, a lever armor type guy. I can do that. Okay, so when you buy your armor, which we will obviously discuss later on, probably in the adventure, you, you have to have, have metal uh, lever armor. Uh, magic users and illusionists can't wear any armor. So you're just Kit it out in fancy garb. <laughs> um, Murph, you can wear any armor you want, so you can you can kit yourself out in chain mail or, or play mail or whatever. Sweet. Mm -hmm. And you can use a shield, Brad. You can't use a shield as a as a druid either. So you're <clears> going to be more on the druidy side rather than the fighter side. I'm imagining, um, but you can use you can use. Um, uh, most well, actually, weapon choice as well. You can you can use. Um, uh, actually, I'll have to double check because you're a multi class. What weapons you can use? So, but anyway, we'll, we'll clarify. You can wear that. half of a suit of armor. Like one half is armored, the other half is leather. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you bought a suit of armor on Wish. <laughs> That's right. Being a, a magic user or an illusionist, um, you can. The only weapon you can use, there's two weapons you can use. You can have a, um, a dagger or you can use a staff. Um, staffs are actually probably a bit better than daggers because I think they're a little bit better defensively as well. But um, So, you so can we be, all get a stick? Is that what I'm hearing? We all just have a giant stick? You can have a slightly bit. Well, I mean, you're a gnome, so your staff is actually <laughs> basically what Brad's carrying. It's just like a stick anyway. <laughs> My staff is a chopstick. Tracy, the group gets one stick and we all have to share it. <laughs> so we are I do so my good. attack and then I give it to you and then you do yours. I see. All yeah. right, so anyway, let's roll for money. <clears throat> uh, let's have a look when it gets to money. Rolling for money like Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is where Tracy says big bucks, no whammies. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Okay, so you show me the money time. So you're going to roll 3d6. And that's how many gold pieces you get. 3d6 times 10. Oh, I was going to say six. like 18 is the max. I'm so screwed. So Murph. 3D6. Okay. Roll 3d6, so 3D6, please. Okay. I got a 2, 6, and a 4. So I got 12. So you have 120 gold pieces. And where do I where do I put that? That's on the second sheet. Uh, yeah, and your treasure section. I mean, you're going to use some of that to, to buy buy equipment, but we'll talk about that in the next session. 120 gold pieces. 
Yeah. Okay. Two sixes and a four is sixteen, right? He said six, four, oh. and a two. Two six and two six and four, so I get twelve. Uh, ah, yeah. not two sixes and four. <laughs> <laughs> two sixes and four. <laughs> Well, if that I, gets me more, more if, that's what, if that's what gets me more stuff, then yes. Yeah, 16. <laughs> it's, it's a 16. But you're a cleric, so don't cheat. Or your uh, god will not. Oh, wait, you're a tiefling cleric. I don't even know how you're going to do that. I have no that? idea. It's good. Yeah. There's going to be this constant internal struggle between his demonic side and in trying to be a, a cleric and being pure and good. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I said 12, but if you heard 20, I'm going with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 120 gold pieces. Tracy, do you want to roll, please? Not really, but I'm going to try. All oh, money, uh, no money. Three sixes. <laughs> no, of course not. I have basically the middle of the road. I got 10. I'm, One, I'm even Steven. Pieces. I'm even Steven. Okay, 100 gold pieces for you. Uh, Debbie. Mm -hmm. that sound? Uh, I have 80 gold. 80? Okay. Yeah, six and two ones. Jesus. And Brad. <laughs> I actually did the exact same roll that Murph did. Two, six, and four. So I had 12. 20 gold pieces. Not quantities of numbers, not two sixes. Cool. Two okay. Well, that, that should give you enough money to get kit, kitted out. Um, uh, and the last thing I think for character creation, we have to talk about alignment. So uh, um, this, I don't know if they have alignment in fifth edition or not, but yeah, they do. Um, and yeah. in the uh, basic versions of Dungeon Dragons, you essentially had, you could either be lawful, chaotic or neutral. Um, so chaotic, obviously on the, the badder side and lawful on the good side and neutral in the middle. Advanced Dungeon Dragons had introduced a lot more extra um, mm -hmm. alignments. Um, like chaotic good and lawful evil and neutral good and, and whatever. We're, we're, we're really just going to play the basic version because alignments, some people don't even use alignments, but for the sake of generally, you, uh, you can either choose to be lawful, neutral or chaotic. Chaotic, you could choose to be, but it would be it'd be interesting to see how you play that in a in a party if, if everyone else is lawful or whatever. But, you know, not to say you can't do it, but it, it, um, it's up to you guys. So, Murphy, um, are you going to be lawful, neutral, or um, you can be a neutral cleric. I mean, even though you're following a holy holy order, that particular religion that you're following might be very, you know, neutral. You could be like this whole sort of, you know, is, I mean, I think Buddhism is fairly neutral, isn't it? It's kind of like, you know, if you're... If, you, if you're um, if something bad happens to you in life, it's kind of because you deserve it. I'm not sure. I think I've, yeah, that's the um, uh, the, re the reincarnation thing, I guess. Yeah, with, yeah, with yeah. Buddhist, yeah. If you mess if up uh, life, you're a cockroach in the next or something. Yeah, like that. I, I, I used to work with two guys who were Buddhists, and I asked them about that, and they said uh, it's kind of like uh, the, the story of the guy who always kicked his neighbor's dog, and when he died, he came back as a dog. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. so I'm I'm going to pick neutral because uh, I do not want to be reincarnated as something, you know. <laughs> Worse than the devil? Yeah, and as far as the, <laughs> as far as the uh, religion side of the things is, I mean, you can make up whatever you want to do. If you want to be the cleric or the holy sausage, yeah. I don't know, you can, you, you can do that. I didn't think it was that type of game, but okay. <laughs> yeah, or well, the holy sock. I don't know what you want to call it. Tracy's uh, re re religion. <laughs> okay, I'm not even sure where it. Uh, where it, 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 where it's, it's just it's, you can just make up something. It, uh, it, it, you can decide whatever you want to be. It, it, okay. It, I mean, obviously, this is a fantasy world, so who knows what your religion your religion is? But essentially, you're a cleric, so you do follow some sort of religion um, or yeah. faith. Okay. Yeah. So, um. All right. Oh, Brad just thrown a spear at a bear. <laughs> <laughs> we will speak well of you, Brad. Okay, so you're a neutral cleric tiefling character. Cool. Right. Uh, yeah. Tracy, alignment. 
So my quick question, chaotic doesn't necessarily mean evil, right? It just means like random and like basically like the word chaotic, right? It could be someone, or, or is it evil in this game? Uh, no, it's not necessarily, well, it can be. It can be, it can be evil, like anything that's bad in this game is chaotic. Um, yeah. But you could, I mean, it's it's fairly open to description. So if you wanted to be someone who is, has fairly dubious moral compass <laughs> you could no like i didn't i don't want to be evil but i was thinking it okay so i'll go neutral because it'll, then it'll just be a character choice to be weird yeah neutral's neutral's pretty neutral's good because you can do anything you want essentially <laughs> you're not, like you're not I have have some benefit. yeah yeah uh brad i think a druid has to be neutral uh uh Good question. I, think I read that somewhere. That. I don't think. So. Uh, no, no. You can be. You can be a neutral. You can be a lawful druid. There's no. I, I think in the past, yes, I think you have been right. But some versions of druids okay. um, were would have to be neutral. But oh, hang on. No, well, since I'm on the fence, Sorry. since I'm on the fence about it, I think I'm just going to out. Neutral. Time out. I'm just reading here. Druids must be neutral in the line. There you go. There you go. Doing it. So I better double check that um, about the clerics and all that before I get too far down. Um, in case I've made a faux pas and the, the critics will come back for me. <laughs> um, where are we? Cleric 18. Cleric. Um, Okay, I think you're okay with cleric. You can be neutral. Okay. And certainly magic users can be anything. And I'm think, but I'll double check on illusionists. So clerics have to be faithful to their the tenets of their alignment, but it doesn't mean that you have to be a lawful alignment. So you can be a neutral alignment as long as you're following the tenets of your of your faith. Um, okay. You're okay. Uh, okay, and then let me just double check on um, illusionists. Murph, what are you drinking while Neil is checking illusionists? Uh, it's a local craft brewery that I, I go to. Um, Trailways. I don't know if you want <laughs> Trailways. Um, and it's a fantastic ipa nice it feels like yeah. we just set that up as a pl product placement <laughs> be her first, yeah. team, her first product sponsor <laughs> there, money's there coming in uh, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't think shooting up heroin for the first meeting would go over well so i chose beer <laughs> just the first one next time that's I'll bet right <laughs> like, next, next, time, next time i'm seriously strung out on skag yeah. I don't even know what that is. Okay, Debbie, you can be whatever religion, uh, whatever alignment you want to be. Uh, I guess I'll be neutral as well. Okay. We are the party. Are we of all neutral. neutral? Tracy, wants, <laughs> Tracy wants to be chaotic right. and she doesn't even know what the tag is. I, I, I thought. Yeah. We're all, all going to be neutral. Naturally, Brad. I, I have a feeling we're not getting the thing done be being neutral. Bending the rules quite a lot, being neutral. <laughs> That's right. So what do we want to do? I don't know. I'm kind of neutral about it. Do <laughs> you want to go to war? No, not really. Well, kind of. But... Yeah, Mr. Switzerland. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do it tomorrow? <laughs> okay, so... The army of procrastination. <laughs> It's like, it was like all a bunch of emos are you? It's like, mm, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Sad face emoji. Okay, nope. so I think we are pretty good, actually. I think we've all got your character classes. You've got your abilities. You've got your managed money you've got. You've got your alignment. So um, in the adventure, um, we will basically, you'll have it. There'll be a starting position where you'll, you'll meet in a town or whatever. 
Um, this is where you'll, before you go on your adventure, you can choose your provisions. You can buy equipment, rations, transportation, wherever, whatever happens, you can, you can spend your money. So you can decide together as a team whether or not you want to pool all your money and then and use it to buy, buy stuff, or you can, you know, just do it, you do, do it by yourself. So, um, I will send out, uh, and, and part of the role playing is that you can go and buy your equipment. So there might be a little bit of dealing with traders and haggling and things like that. So, so, so episode one will just be like meeting our friends at the mall. Is that kind Shopping. of what we're doing? <laughs> so, something like that. Something like that. But you, you, it, it'll be, it'll be, uh, yeah, it'll be starting off. You'll be, you'll be kidding yourselves out and then you'll be essentially st- starting your, your adventure. Um, I'm still working on what adventure it might be. It might be something I, I have an idea to create some myself, but I have plenty of um, pre-made adventures that we can use. So I haven't decided which way we'll go, but um, that all be revealed at the next session. Um, so, yeah, so that essentially for the time being, that's probably all we need to do for the, for the character creation. Um, we will discuss offline what spells you choose, uh, and then we'll update things like your saving throws and your uh, attack values for like what you have to roll to hit different. Mm. And also, once you got your armor and all that, will determine your armor classes as well, which is um, what people obviously need to, to, to hit you or damage you. Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, but any any questions for you guys about the game before we finish up on this? All pretty. I just you. Kind of- uh- I'm just yeah. glad you got up early on a Sunday morning to do this with us. This is fun. Yeah, I yeah, really appreciate it, Neil. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so uh, like I said, next session, um, hopefully we'll be joined by M, who will have a character done. Uh, and then um, you will most likely be in a town somewhere. <laughs> Burn, <laughs> you know, Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, the Sales great hard, the hadron collider in right now. Is that it? It's trying, oh, you trying to you meant, you meant, you meant burn, burn. the city. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like burn. Our, our quest is our quest is to create the greatest Swiss navy knife ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Debbie and I with the daggers. We're like, all right, we've got the knife covered. That's, That's it. Right. Everybody like, else. Oh no, oh. creature coming. Pulls it out. Oh no, I've got the spoon. Hang on. It's yeah, but for me, oh. it's like a two-handed sword with the giant Swiss <laughs> army knife. You're like, ah, my yeah. guard. You can pull out the course. <laughs> if you do, if you do tell M that our first adventure is to go to Burn, she'll totally be in. <laughs> yeah, it'll be like, uh, shopping. She's like, okay. It's very it's expensive. In Switzerland. I was in Switzerland in 2019. And it's very expensive, yeah. and I actually did want to go and buy a Swiss army knife because. I did have a Swiss Army knife in my youth, but um, uh, but once I got there, I realized how expensive they were. <laughs> yeah, Cho- chocolate watches and Swiss Army knives—that's what you go to Switzerland for. Plus, and the, the pricing is well, you're playing full tourist rates, so it's incredibly expensive. So I decided to pass an all. I think I did get chocolate, <laughs> but anyway. Okay. All right. So I think we can wrap up the, the session. So, um, yep. Uh, thanks guys for joining. And so next time we will kick off on the first session of the old school essentials, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Sounds fantastic. Thanks again. Right. Thanks Thank so you. much, Neil.